all the way back to, I think, the 1880s, there have been what were then called international trade secretariats. And these trade secretariats were actually started, uh, they were, these were heavy industry. It was textile secretariat, there was metals secretariat, there was transport secretariat, even uh, fiat and the commercial workers and so forth didn't exist back then. These were really heavy industry. In Europe, at least, were, were totally led by socialists, uh, social democrats, and labor party people in England who were all, or many of them, were political leaders at well, as well and pre attended the world uh, congresses of the Socialist International, the Second International. Uh, and when they met in the Second International meetings, they would have side meetings for trade unionists, separate a bit from the party. I think in the 1880s, party and union didn't have much separation at a national level. The first one in the media was the International Federation of Musicians. And uh, they started in 49, is that correct, or 48, right along there. Uh, FIA came along in 52, I believe. Uh, they were both professional organizations. With the technicians, it gets a little more complicated. Uh, because on the technician side, in fact, when I was working for the union in New York, not only could we not imagine being together with other organizations, we couldn't even imagine being together with television technicians. When professionals organize, it's not exactly the same as industrial unions. It, they, could, they couldn't understand the world of the 1880s of heavy industry internationals. So it was quite understandable that they started off on their own. They were part of the main line at the time. When I say main line, I say Western main line. Uh, nobody thought in 49 or 48 when the musicians started, or in 52 even, nobody really thought, are these pro-West or pro-East or, or anything like that? And since they were not, even though many of the people as individuals, as is true of many of us in the media, we have very strong opinions and often are on one side, that usually in many cases that is not carried over into the unions because the unions are professionals and you try to bring everyone in. Uh, so th my point is that by the, as the Cold War started developing, the Western unions, particularly with the leadership of the Americans, let's be honest, but also very importantly, the socialists in Japan and the Labor Party in England and the Social Democrats in, in uh, uh, Germany, and to a lesser extent, actually the minority in France, the, the, the anti-communist, the ones who wouldn't go into the CGT, which were the minority at the time, these said we can no longer work together with communists. Uh, so the ITS is split, and secretariats were set up around the world, most of them in Moscow, for the ones that were working with communists, and the others were scattered out mostly throughout Europe, but there were one or two organizations even in the United States representing the different sectors. I think at one point there were 15 or 18 or something, what we called ITSs, the International Trade Secretariats. FIM and FIA were just part of that community. When the others split, FIM and FIA did not. So uh, the others looked at that as a political decision, but FIM and FIA, at least the people I have known in later times, never looked at it that way. 